everybody. It's Kate Richburg. Sorry that I was a little tardy. I was having some internet issues. I'm having some electrical work done at my house. So that's why I'm back in my sewing room because the electrical work is going on near the studio. And he had to turn off some power and it was fine but my internet happens to be connected to that piece of power. So I have the technology. I'm going live from my phone. We can always do it. So I wanted to say a big hi and hello. And let me see, this um, is always a little more difficult on my phone. So I'm gonna bring Emily in. Em, are you there? I'm here, Kate. Yay. Okay. I'm going to try and put you on the screen. Yes. There Yay. we are. Hello. Hi. So a big hello to you. And um, first, I wanted to say a big hello to Janice, who is moderating over on YouTube. A big hello to Gita, who's <laughs> moderating over on Facebook. And I a big it. hello... Yeah, we do. And a big hello. Sorry, my hand. I have to turn this up a little bit. Um, a big hello. There we go. To all of our friends in Florida in the path of that crazy hurricane. I know we have a lot of you who are down there watching. So we're hoping that everything stays safe and sane down there. So um, we're thinking about you as we're doing this today. So... Um, okay. So Emily, you're doing an old favorite today. I am doing an old favorite. I, I love this technique because it's just wire and pliers. It's something that you can kind of do any place, anytime. I've taken right. it on camping trips. I've done it on planes. Um, I've done right. Planes, trains, and automobiles. Yes. It's so nice because it is so super simple. And it's a classic. Um, it's also one that if you're looking for gift giving as Christmas is rapidly approaching, it's probably one that no one has yet. So it right. can be really a new one in your repertoire. There's multiple ways you can do it. You can do it in multiple colors. You can make earrings. You can make a necklace. You can make bracelets. You can make the whole set if you want. Yes. I, I do love this technique. And it is it is easy and satisfying. It's such a good one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spotlight my phone. And since I'm on my phone, I can, I can walk around anywhere. Sorry about my hand being in the front. I'm going to spotlight me and I'm going to talk about, I'm going to show the, um, the, <laughs> there I am. Uh, let me see if I can turn this phone around. I have the, um, the samples here. Emily, that I want to show you guys uh, before Emily gets started. Uh, here we go. Uh, these are the samples that you've done, Em. Oh, in the mixed metals, it's so fun and so pretty. Yeah. But copper is lovely too. Um, you know, I really like the um, Parawire tit titanium color because yeah. it looks like a little bit of a patinaed silver already. Yeah. Um, you know, if you do silver, it's fine and, and it won't tarnish. If you could do sterling silver, you can oxidize it to show right. the, the details. <clears throat> and then we did the bare copper with it, which will tarnish on its own, of course. Um, and you could oxidize and polish and, you know, muck around with that a little bit if you wanted. Right. But it is really fun to mix them. Um, and that titanium is just so, it's so nice looking. Yeah, um, it's such a nice coating. Really and like the para wire is such a durable, nice wire. Yeah. And especially if you're just learning this technique, utilizing the para wire is a really economical way to not worry about um, wasting wire or yes. whatever. I remember doing these like way back in the day. Emily and I were having this chat yesterday. I'm sorry, you're kind of I'm trying to, I need one more hand. There we go. Um, we were talking about like some old wire working friends. You guys may remember the artistry of Lynn Merchant back in the day, that really heavy, um, sterling, um, really beautiful wire. She set the tone for kind of the wire work style in the early nineties. Um, 
I did a whole bunch of these in a super heavy weight wire. I think I did these back in the day in like 16 gauge and wow. they were, they were big. Yeah. Um, but you can see with Emily's here, she's going to talk about the difference too. See this one here, how it's kind of curved up. It's kind of cupped. Can you see that? And there's a handout. If you go to beadshop.com and Janice has put on the screen the project and ingredients, you can go right to beadshop.com to collections, Egyptian chain, and everything is there, including the handout that Emily made us. Um, but as Emily said, you can do it in this kind of, kind of cupped style. I think I'm getting that, that mm -hmm. shot there. You can see that. Or a more flat style like so and emily's also done these earrings which i think are just beauties look at that and they're tiered these would just make a great fast gift just on their own you know you don't have to commit to a whole um necklace it's gorgeous and janice just uh linked lynn merchants insta we were actually looking at that t yesterday janice thanks for um for linking that that brings back old school uh wire memories for sure so there's that so em i'll take my phone whoops sorry about that i'll take my phone off of if i can off of highlighting let me see sorry you guys it's um i'm going to turn my phone here real quick there we go um uh layout here there we go let's do this here we are and emily i am going to spotlight there we go there we are. I'm going to spotlight your camera. Okay. And I'll let you take it away. Again, sure. sorry about this kind of crazy camera work I'm doing here, you guys. But uh, but that's what I've got. Oh, there we go. All right, Kate, Emily. Kate, you're fine. You know, this is the beauty of the live TV is that, you know, you really are just kind of at the mercy of whatever comes your way, you know. <laughs> that's and, right. And it's, it's totally fine. Yeah. Um, okay. And we're not afraid to go live, right? No, we're not no, afraid. No, no. Absolutely. <laughs> Are you kidding? If not for the faint of heart. No. So but... I'm super excited to see what you've got there. And it looks, Emily, like you've got an old school one in Sterling there too. I do. I have a, this is a, this is a, my, one of my personal ones that oh. um, I made for myself. Also made with the same kind of, same, exactly the same technique that we could do today. Mm -hmm. Really, these Egyptian chain bracelets have been around for thousands of years. They are um, a really timeless look. Um, and you can do a few different looks with them as well. Mm -hmm. I do like this style, which is what I consider a double link. So each link has uh, is, in, is inserted into two links when we assemble it. Right. That's really cool. I've never actually made it that way. I do it that single flat way that you're showing there. Yeah. But that double, especially with, you're using 20 gauge today. Yes. Is that right, Emily? Yeah. 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 When I did that flat, I would sometimes use 18 and I would go all the way up to 16 and it would be, it would be crazy on my hands, but it looked yeah. kind of like a Wonder Woman cuff. It was yeah, crazy. Yeah. They're very, you can be, make me very beefy you know, yeah. as much as, as much or little as you desire. Yeah. Um, gosh, it's so, this just, it's taken me right back to, uh, back in the day. It's gorgeous. And this would do, this would also make a necklace. Um, yeah. you know, if I move this out of the way and kind of curve this on the, on my board here, this would actually make a lovely necklace and you wouldn't have to go all the way around. You could go sort of three quarters and then put some chain at the back. Yeah. Um, you know, people love, spiral and they most folks really kind of bond to it and sort of understand that it's a it's sort of a universal thing and it's something that we've probably been making as humans um for millions of years right. um i did throw in the little earring directions and this is just a a, a briolette that i found out of my stash um and i like this little stack of of uh coils these are made in actually different lengths than we will do for the bracelet 
but that stepping size length gives you that that taper but you could also make them go this way you know yeah. i just chose to have them go from small to large but you could actually have them go from large to small it's really it's cool and could you use that same method emily to taper the end of your bracelet absolutely sure Sure. That would look, I just, that kind of just came to me. Just a That would be really interesting. There. Yeah. And then Gita just asked, are these sticky? Do they get stuck on sweaters, et cetera? Or is it a pretty smooth? The single link style is something that can be a little catchy. Mm -hmm. um, in other words, it'll catch on a, on a loose, a loosely knit garment. Um, but they're pretty smooth. Uh, yeah. And one of the things I like about the double link is it's a little bit denser. So right. it wouldn't, won't have quite that much problem. Mm -hmm. um, and I used the Anna's clasp for right. all the samples that you've got. And the antique silver matches the titanium colored pair wire perfectly. Mm -hmm. And then the, uh, and the uh, uh, brighter silver one matches with a silver really nicely. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's kind of fun that this takes really just wire clasp couple of jump rings and and your tools and you're kind of done you know mm -hmm. um i do like to think of this as my assembly line when i make this particular bracelet um i make all the links to one stage and then move on to the next stage so i right. cut my wires kind of pretty much all at once and then move on to that next stage so we're going to i'm just going to take this in in order and have it kind of show you what it looks like to sort of start and do the whole thing Great. Um, this is a lather, rinse, and repeat. Once you have done the basic technique, you will just be continuing with that basic technique. And really what we're going to do is we're going to cut our wires. We're going to take our round nose pliers, and we're going to make a P loop at each end of each wire. <clears throat> I make them as small as I can manage with my pliers. Um, if your loops, P loops come out a little large, you can compress them a little bit but that's gonna be the middle of your spiral. So you wanna make kind of as tidy and, and again, as uniform as you can, matching the ends and these P loops are gonna go inwards on the wire. Mine happened to go with the curve that was there in the wire as it came off the, spir off the spool. It doesn't really matter, but they just need to go in the same direction. We're gonna- Can you uh, lift that just a little bit higher sure. and those P loops just so we can see that curve and how it, yeah, can you guys see? Uh, maybe put your hand behind it real quick. Yeah, there we go. And you guys can see that that has kind of a small diameter in the center. And Emily's going to show you when she actually makes it. But I wanted you guys to see it. We're going to go from that to the coiling step. Mm -hmm. And these these little links are the links that you're going to make. Each one is going to be coiled in. And we're going to have a measurement here to kind of get them consistent. Um, small variations you know, over the theme of this, not too big a deal. There's a little small variation, right? A little bit of different size there, not a problem, okay? But we're gonna make lots of these little guys. So a single link bracelet is gonna need somewhere in the neighborhood of 19 to 21 links. Mm -hmm. That depends on your wrist size. It also depends on the clasp you try to choose and how many jump rings you use to attach that clasp. Um, sometimes you'll need a couple, maybe you might need two or you might need two more than two on each end. Um, so 19 to 21 links is kind of the, the round number. I would cut 19 pieces of wire and start there. And if you needed to cut a couple more, you could always do that. If you want to do the double link, it's a bigger commitment. 53 to 55 links that you're going to make, right? So these links do... Um, are repetitive uh, motion that you're going to make. And it may give you some wrist pain if you continue to do this long into the night without a break. So right. my recommendation is every 20 minutes or so, take a little break, stretch your hands and wrists, and then come back to it. Or even, you know, get up and do something else for half a, half an hour and then come back to it. But give right. your a break. This is a lot of coiling to do in one sitting. Uh, it's not something that I would probably do. Mm -hmm. in I would break it up for sure. Um, so Emily, would you recommend, uh, there's a couple of questions. Sure. So there's 20 gauge that you're using, yep. right? Would you recommend going down to 22 or do you feel that 22 is a little small? 
I think 22 is a little small. Yeah, I would agree. <laughs> if you were going to make an earring with more than three or four um, uh, links in it, mm -hmm. and you were worried about the weight that it was starting to build up, you know, you wanted it to be really long, mm -hmm. uh, it'd be fun to make this tapered up and down, wouldn't it? So, yeah, it would be. Yeah, that's a and thought. And especially if you made the coils maybe a little bit smaller, 22 sure. might work. Yeah, yeah. And it, it would help with the weight of the piece um, mm -hmm. a little bit. So you could go down to 22. I, I was, my eyebrows went up when you said you were working in 16 gauge. It was like, holy Toledo. No, it was that's, heavy. Um, it, my hands were a lot younger. Yeah. So we're going to go from this making the link stage to this one. I call this the, um, that girl. Um, I don't know if you remember there was a TV show with Marla. Yes, Gellman. I do. The, and she the had her hair that, and the logo had this kind of hairdo kind of flip on it. And so yeah, it the has Margo the, Thomas, the Margo, Margo Thomas, Thomas, that girl has yeah. this sort of feeling for me of uh, sort of a head with hair coming and flipping over on it. So well, we're going to remember she this. had the kite, her logo on the kite. Right. Right. So <laughs> this, this link is going to be the next step. And again, this has a little variation. It's not perfectly symmetrical. Let me grab an um, index card here. Hold on. And let me show you guys just, or there was a question and I can answer it here a couple. Um, the uh, How many inches for each piece? I just measured your bracelet, Emily. And mm. it looks like with the single link, there's three links across make about an inch. Right. And then the um the wire that we're using is the dead soft para wire it's not the german style that's half hard right. um i think that you need the softer wire for this emily is that correct I, I would do it you know you you could you could probably do it out of the half out of the half hard the uh -huh. problem would be is it's so springy you'd have a harder time getting those coils nice and yeah tight. that tight spiral i agree well, yeah. i mean it's it's a it's a choice um well not a you know maybe not one i i do so yeah. from this link stage we're going to make the links into something that looks like this which is hard to show because it's so 3d and then we're going to link them together that'll be the next step mm -hmm. there's a double link and i knew i had my links laid out here but this one's got turned around nope there's a single link right there So once we get to the linking stage, of course, things will go very quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, not much time to do these two steps. The, all the other steps in, in total take a lot more, right? And I did the alternating ones. You know, it was kind of a whim, but it also made it easy to look at on the handout and easy to mm -hmm. look at on the screen. Um, just it's helpful when you're learning. If you want to make a few of these for practice, you know, make a half a dozen, make six. Mm -hmm. three copper and three silver or three gold. It's lovely for that learning process. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then uh, one more question. And I sure. think I know the answer to this, but do you have to harden your spirals before assembling? No, nope. I think you're doing yeah. plenty of bending right now. Right. So when, as you're spiraling the wire and as you're bending it and everything, I think there'll be enough work hardening of it, but Emily's yeah. going to get into all that. So sure. she's going to jump in and, uh, and, um, start putting this guy together. Yeah. I, you know, it just kind of occurs to me, Kate. Um, uh -huh. I want to just talk about wire and work hardening for one quick second. Sure, I think sure. it's been a little minute since we've done a bunch of wire stuff and, um, so when you buy wire or sheet metal, it comes in a designated flexibility mm -hmm. and we like to use a couple of different flexibilities, depending on what you might be making, what the end result is. Right. Also and known as temper. Right. Whenever you, um, manipulate a piece of wire, bend it, twist it, fold it, unbend it, straighten it, do any of those things to the, to the metal, you're messing up the, uh, disrupting the bonds of the metal down at the near molecular state. Metals are uh, crystalline structure. So as you begin to disrupt those connections where the metal, when it's dead soft, has lots of layers, can lots of sides connected to one another and lots of surface area. And as you bend it and manipulate it, you break up those bonds. 
And there's a point with that manipulation where the bonds fail, the wire breaks, and that's called metal fatigue. And this probably happened to every person I've ever known. Could be a bread twist tie, could be a toy that had a metal piece that you bent back and forth a bunch of times and it broke, a bunch of places that you might encounter that happening. It does happen, in, happen with jewelry wire too. So when we say dead soft, what we mean is metal or wire at its most flexible state. So it's been annealed, heated up, and that annealing process helps all those molecular bonds join up with lots of surface area, kind of come together in a happy formation. Right. When we get to the next step, half hard, the wire or metal has actually been manipulated to a certain level so that it is stiffer. It doesn't bend quite so easily. Um, that means it's closer to metal fatigue, but it does hold its shape better. So knowing which one you need is, is better, is a good thing. Full hard wire or full hard sheet metal is something we rarely use in jewelry making. It's so stiff that it's hard to bend. We can always anneal it if we want, but then that sort of defeats the purpose of it being full hard. Whenever we hammer on wire, whenever we bend it or metal, all those things that we're doing to it tend to work hard in it. Over a long period of time, it will actually anneal itself. It will relax, those bonds will relax and join back together in lots of connections. But that's years of time, not days or hours. So we want to know the temper. We want to know how much manipulation that wire can take. And then you also need to know what you're going to make with it. So you may end up having half hard and dead soft around that you don't use initially or immediately. And that's okay. It's okay to have some supplies. Mm -hmm. It's good to um, make sure you label your wire so you know which is which and, um, and, and choose the right wire for the job. And Janice is asking um, about head and eye pins. Are they usually half hard or are they dead soft? And I would say usually half hard half unless you hard. get a really yeah. small sort of exactly. um, 16 or 26 gauge ones. You know, you might get mm -hmm. down to some of those really, really fine ones that are pretty floppy. Mm -hmm. um, I actually mostly work with half hard. I actually find it easier to work with. Mm -hmm. For most things, um, for just my general wire wrapping, it's stiffer, holds its shape a little bit better. Just for me, it's a little easier to manipulate. Um, mm -hmm. Dead soft is a little bit more like working with soft butter. Mm -hmm. You know, um, can't really cut a nice even piece because it's so deformed so easily. And you should also see, Curtis is asking, do the spools of wire say if it's dead soft or half hard? Yeah, wherever you get your wire the spool may not say it but the description should i think our descriptions do um kind of a rule of thumb what i do when i check the temper of my wire and i have a spool of wire that's actually sitting right here it's bare copper wire and it doesn't say whether or not it's half hard or not it says the gauge um etc and it says how much is in the spool but if you are holding the wire and you kind of flick it with your finger, if it doesn't spring back, then it's probably dead soft or maybe quarter hard, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, anytime, though, you start to work with that wire, wire wrap it, make loops, manipulate it, like Emily is saying, it starts to work harden. So usually, and I think you have to go out of your way to get wire on a spool that's half hard. You have to specify it usually. I, or, I would say that it's a, it's more common that wire that is unmarked is dead soft. Dead soft. Correct. I would agree with that. Half hard and, wire takes a little more energy to make. So yeah. it's going to be labeled. And usually when you make half hard wire, when half hard wire is made, it's drawn down to gauge sizes. So if I were making my own half hard wire at home in my studio, mm. I would take an 18 gauge wire and draw it through a draw plate. So it would go down from 18 to 19 and then to 20. And after I drew it through, to a 20 gauge, that would give me a half hard uh, temper. 
We um, should do some wire drawing someday, Kate, to show folks oh, what that's like. Yeah, we could. Yeah. I mean, it would be fun to show. It's kind of a beast, but it's it's fun. And of course, yeah. when you draw your wire down, you're using bare wire or sterling wire. You're not using anything that's plated. Right. Um, so, uh, but this, the pair of really, wire. Oh, it's go a ahead. Really cool, it's a really cool technique and it's, it's, it's fun. Super interesting yeah. to, have, to see it happen and, and understand what it, what the wire kind of looked like and felt like before, and then draw it down and see what it how it changes. Yeah. And then no. anneal it also and show it again. So right. When, as you're drawing it, through yeah. it's it's fun and i yeah. i've actually made wire back in the day uh when we took an ingot and we rolled it and we rolled it and we drew it and we rolled it um that is not a jewelry technique that i need to make by hand ever again <laughs> but well but it's, I can, it's fun to make it for sure i think it's a little bit like growing wheat to make bread you yeah know, it's nice to know how it works because you have an appreciation 100 percent buying it already made, buying the flour already made, but most people, 90 percent right. of them are Don't never going to have a grist mill. <laughs> no, but it's nice to know how it works, you know? I mean, yeah, 100%. it's sort of an abstract thought that you can pick a plant and turn it into flour and then bake a loaf of bread out of it. Yeah, um, exactly. And, and, you know, flour doesn't just come from the store, you know? Right, from the right. Store. Okay, so back to work. I'm going to go ahead and um, uh, cut a piece of wire and show you how I, I like to do it. Um, this is the titanium para wire. And I'm, I got to say, this is what's left over after making um, almost two bracelets. So, wow. So, yeah, there's plenty on there. Will go a fair ways, but you're going to, you may mm -hmm. want a second. And if you get two colors, then, you know, it's easy to, to have. Um, I'm going to pull some wire off. And <clears throat> my general rule of thumb with wire is, though, I want to be as sort of as thrifty with it as possible, not waste it. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to use my handy dandy metal ruler to measure this wire and cut it. And I'm going to use my heavier flush cutters for this job. And I'll show you why in a minute. Um, I'm going to come in with my flush cutter and cut flush across the end of the wire to cut my piece. And now I have a piece of wire that has a flush cut at this end. So I've cut across it with the flat side of the wire cutter going straight across the cutter, across the wire, excuse me, at a 90 degree angle. And I'm going to have to flip around and cut mm -hmm. a little bit off this end because that's not flush. So then I would make multiples of these. And then I would go in and cut, I might cut several at a time with these heavier flush cutters. They'll work really well for this. So I'll, I would stack them all up and maybe just trim off that last little unflush end all at once, you know, three, four, oh, five that's of those smart. at a time. Yeah. Because if I'm, if I'm off measurement by eighth, sixteenth inch, it's not going to matter for this process at all. It's going to be just fine. And I know we carry this um, Italian flush cutter. It's one of my favorites. I use it a lot. So now I have my yeah, wires it's a nice, it's a nice stack, one. right? Do you feel, Kate, it's easier to see the copper or the silver right now on screen? Tell me um, which maybe, I the, maybe the copper, I think. Okay. Okay. And I have I my know. handy they dandy bowls. So I've made a bunch before to that fun bowls. state bowls. So I'm holding those off to the side. So I'm going to take my round nose plier and I'm just going to grab right on the very end of this wire, right? And at a fairly small spot on the plier, and I'm going to round it around and make that P loop. So most of the time when we're making a, a simple loop, a loop without wraps, the P is not what we're really after. We're really looking for more of a loop that's centered on the stem of the wire. But this time, the P is exactly what we're after. And I'll flip that wire around and make the P again. Oopsie. Oh, um, yeah, Sorry. You, you went, you went Sorry. out there for a second. I have to turn my phone off. I did, neglected to do that. Hold on. Right. Um, the do not disturb. 
Yeah, get that's me, okay. Me, give me heartbeat here to flip that little switch. And, no uh, worries. Okay. Better now. So I have my piece of wire with my two P loops on either end. And my P loops are not yet in plane. And that's so, that. Okay. Right? So I'm going to use my chain nose plier to grab a hold of one end. And I'm going to just twist them a little bit until they come into plane with one another. So both P loops are wrapping in and both of them are in the same direction and in the same plane. Okay. How's that looking? Not bad. Great. Yeah. Right. And that's still, so, that's that six inch piece six of inch wire. Piece. Yep. It's it's dead soft, and mm -hmm. we're using the dead soft so we get that nice tight coil coil, now, and you'll you'll see that this, there. I would like this P to be a little bit smaller, so I'm going to come in and mm -hmm. kind of compress him just gently a little bit. He was a little bit bigger than his cousin over here. Okay, so now they're about the same size. So here comes the fun coiling part. This is the part you're going to do kind of over and over again. And it's not difficult. What you want to think about <clears throat> is holding the wire gently but firmly. If you mash down on the pliers too hard, you're going to make a, a fair amount of tool marks on your wire, which you can reduce some with a little steel wool. If you like, even on the pair of wire, you can take some of those marks down a bit. But on the copper, you could certainly sand it down. So the tool or our chain nose plier is a fulcrum okay uh, when we push on one side the other side moves what we want to do is use the back part of the fulcrum because this is the place that when we grip we are the gentlest and least marring so i'm going to grip in the back part of my tool closest to the jaw as possible this particular one has a little offset in the jaw so i'm going to get to the just about as far back as I possibly can. I'm going to hold firmly and then just have the loop inside the plier jaw. And I'm going to push towards the tips of the pliers. So the wire is going right parallel, right along the, the jaws of the plier. I'm going to loosen my grip, opening the tool, and replace back to where I was before. And do it again. Replace. Do it again. Again, la la la. And again, oh, sorry, I turned it off, Kate, but my computer is still on. And again, like that. Okay. So this is the look that I'm looking for. This is the um, the result that I'm going for. We can flip around and work on the other end also back and forth. Kate, you still with me? Not sure if I'm not talking here or Kate's not talking. I'm just gonna continue on as if you guys are still with me. Yep, we're all good. Sorry, good. Em. I had That's you. Right. I had myself on mute, and I didn't realize. And I'm all la la la, and then I realized, oh, okay. Huh. Well, it sounded like dead air, so I. Sorry I, about that. Sorry. It's, okay. it's all right. We're all all motoring right along. Yeah. So it's... I will just alternate here, going along and making my coils, and I'm looking to make this link about an inch and three eighths long. So if I lay this on an inch marker and I look up at the top here, so an, an inch and a half would be an inch and four quarters. So I want about a quarter underneath there. So about an inch and three eighths. Okay. About like that. There's an inch and a quarter, there's an inch and a half, about an inch and three eighths, so right in between those two. So that looks pretty good. 
Mm -hmm. So the other thing I might look at with this link that I'm making is I'm looking kind of at the spirals in the middle. Let me grab a pointer. Hold on. I'm looking where those spirals end up in the middle. And they're pretty close to one another. But that's another kind of a key that I've kind of made the spirals even from side to side. Okay. That they're a little off. One's a little smaller. One's a little bigger. Meh. I'm not so worried about that. Let me show you doing that link one more time, and then we'll go the next step, okay? So I'm gonna grab a wire. I'm gonna use my round nose pliers to make a P loop right around. I think those P's came out different last time because I used two different directions. I shouldn't have done that. Yeah, oh. and you wanna loop them towards the same Right now, that one came out a little bit big too. Well, it's, it's also big doing big. it under the camera is also a, a yeah. little bit different, right? All right, so I'm going to grasp in the jaw of the plier, push my wire towards the front of the tool, loosen and replace. And you'll see at some point that I don't really need to going at Emily speed, as Kate says. <laughs> I don't really need to pull this out of the plier very far to look at it. Now, if you find yourself with some little tool marks, there are they're gonna happen. I wouldn't worry that, about them too much. You can use a little blue painter's tape on your tool if you want, the jaws of your tool. But most of the time, small stuff's not gonna really show. Yeah, and you'll get in the groove of it. Audrey has a quick <laughs> question. She says, by doing the spiraling the other way, by moving the spiral and pliers and not the wire, Will that affect the tightness of the spiral? So, so doing it like doing, that, right. grabbing it and rolling it? I don't think so. I think they're about mm -hmm. the same. Yeah. If I want to help adjust that tightness of the spiral, I can grasp a hold of this wire, pull a little bit that direction, so mm -hmm. away, and then push it up. Mm -hmm. But I find most of the time that most people have no trouble making this coil nice, nice and even. And I'm really mm -hmm. looking more for even than anything else. Yeah, I just want to have my pieces match one another pretty yeah. well, and I'm not too worried about uh, tightness. Yeah, That's and Shelly's asking, and I think I know the answer to this. Sure. Why wouldn't you make the bend in the center of the wire first? Wouldn't that make it easier to make the spirals even? And I think the answer to that is that it's easier actually to have them straight across like you have it there, Emily. So yeah. you can kind of lay them one on top of the other, right? Yeah. yeah, I think this is the easier way. I mean, I I have never considered that. Mm -hmm. So Shelly, I, I will do it. So first off, yeah. I have to find the center mm -hmm. and um, grasp it, kind of move it back. So she's asked me to do it this way. Mm -hmm. I just think it's going to be wire sticking at you. I mean, even just from this point, right. I just, it's not as even here. Mm -hmm. So my wires are two different lengths, which I could adjust, um, you know, and, and you do you for sure. If you find that that's an easier way, knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. um, I think that I would be frustrated by having these wires kind of poking at me mm -hmm. rather than just working on one, flipping around, doing the other. So yeah. does anybody need another link to be made? Um, I think we're good. Let's okay. move on to our next step. Sure. Um, I thought I would go ahead and do this um, with two tones, just because it's easier to see. Yeah. And um, manipulate. So let me grab out maybe three of each um, in copper and in silver to do single and double links, okay? Because I think that's nice to see. Um, I don't need to really work onto those guys. Okay, so step number two, we're done with measuring. We're done with loose bits of wire. We're done, I'm gonna just coil up this spool and get it out of my, out from catching on my wrist over there. Okay. So our next goal is to make these um, guys right here, this next link, okay? 
And this is a very simple point to make, um, not very complicated. I'm going to take my... Emily, I'm just muting myself for one second so you don't get background noise, but I'm here. Okay. All right. I'm just going to grasp right in the middle of this link with my round nose pliers. And I'm going to just use my fingertips to bend it down. And I'll take a quick look at it and make sure it's pretty even. That's where I want to go with these. Okay. And whenever you're grasping round wire with round tools, which is what I'm doing here, you want to be sort of gentle. You know, um, it's quite easy to make tool marks that you didn't mean to have happen. And that compression of the wire and the tool is work hardening. We don't want to do that unnecessarily. Okay. So I'm just grasping this grip here in the jaws is very light. I'm using the jaw itself as a mandrel. So something to form wire or metal around. Let me do one upwards this way so everybody can see. So as you're coming along, if you can feel it's getting uneven, you know, push harder on one side, even it up. It's fine. So these are my first ones for my single link. I'm gonna move back to chain nose pliers. See how different this one came out from itself? On each side, the spiral doesn't match up very neatly. And I might just take this one and curl it up a little. I maybe uncurl this one just a little bit to get a little bit more of a feeling like they're a little more similar to one another, right? So now the centers of those coils are facing much more of a, um, they're much more a mirror image of one another. And that's kind of what I look for. So now I'm gonna grasp the link right at the top of the coils, and I'm gonna bend the wire over the top. And this step is something that you can do very quickly. And it's mostly hand power. That's not really just the tool giving me something to grab a hold of and allowing me to manipulate the wire easily and cleanly. And this kind of goes along pretty quick. So typically when I make these bracelets, I do it in this same fashion, the assembly line process. I cut all my wires, do all my P's, do all my coils, do all my bends, and then create these links so that I can then assemble them together. Okay. So this looks, is a good. Looks good. I'm sorry. I just wanted to drop oh, in yeah. and comment. I'm good. The, good. <laughs> Excellent. This is a good place. Um, we can use actually put in uh, our clasp and <clears throat> I like a jump ring. I like a heavy jump ring. Um, I am also sometimes on board with Kate's heavy jump rings that are oval. Yeah. But in this case, I'm just going to use round jump rings. And I'm going to attach one half of the clasp to my piece, right? So here's another kind of interesting thing to think about. Um, when we attach things to the clasp, in this case, from this attachment, I'm actually going to need two jump rings. Can everybody see how that is working, right? One jump ring is in the same plane as the loop on the clasp. And so I need a, another jump ring in there to, to, to bridge that gap. So I'm gonna close this jump ring up. And I did purposefully choose um, a, a mismatched metal color here so that you could see what was happening. I think that's nice for uh, filming, makes it easy. Um, you can do this at home too. And I'm, I love a mixed metal. All right, let me go right in here. Pick up that Anna's clasp. It's one of my favorite clasps, actually. I love. Yeah, it's such a nice, substantial, of it and... substantial clasp. Yeah. And just a reminder, a couple of people who are um, coming in late, uh, Emily is using the 20 gauge uh, pair of wire, and you can find all of that info right on the project sheet over at beadshop.com, along with Emily's handout. I'm going to close this guy up. And two pairs of chain nose pliers are ideal 
for attaching jump rings. So isn't that nice? That heavy jump ring absolutely looks like it's part of that clasp. Yeah, it's great. You know, you really can't see the difference. <laughs> so here comes the fun part, the linking part. So I'm gonna hold this just in my hand and I'm gonna bend this link closed. So you can see the little loop here. That next link's gonna kind of sneak in there, turn, and I'm gonna bend it closed. And so, so see what Emily is doing? She's putting the links at like right angles in there. So she's pushing it from, there's the little bend. It's going just right in there and closing up. Look at how fast. This is why the, the assembly line process I think is, is so much more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if I was having to do this link at a time, I would be <gasps> screamingly bored by the time I got to the end. Right. Right? Looks great. So here's a place too, where you can do some little bits of manipulation. Um, if you feel like there's an uneven gap in the links, you could just, oh, you can uncoil just slightly, kind of move those guys around. And then you begin to have this beautiful design occurring, right? I just think it's so pretty. I, I, I adore it. I love the snaky feel of it. It's very flexible and kind of sexy. Um, it's a really pretty, a really pretty design. Yeah, it looks real. And I like the two colors that you've I got. Do too. I do too. I do too. Okay. So let's, um, let's make a, let's make a few more of those and then we'll do the double link. Okay. okay. So same process here, double link, single link is going to be the same. I'm going to go ahead and bend my coiled wires into those ladies with the hairdo, Marlo Thomas's. Marlo Thomas? No. Yeah, Marlo Thomas. Am I right? Okay. And then I will have a little pile of links to work with. And I think this is the 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 magic part of this whole thing. You know, you've kind of gone along and made all those coils and uh, you're sort of tired and oh man. And yet the, the uh, finish line is so close and right. so fast and so smooth that you're just skiing downhill and running right into that end process. So it's good fun. All right. So we're going to grab them again, our chain nose plier, bend those bends over. And I do it just about, it's about a 90 degree bend, right? So this double linking uh, process is a little slower and it, it becomes a denser result, um, takes more manipulations, might be kind of a, a little bit more masculine looking. So if you were planning this for a guy, um, those, uh, those heavier, more dense links, I think look a little more masculine, maybe. I don't know. We could argue that either direction. And my jump rings, of course, are all tangled up on each other. This one, it's not jump rings, it's those pesky crimp bead covers. Holy Toledo. Mm -hmm. Sometimes they just get really tangled yeah, up. Yeah, all. Right? all tangled up it's not it's not me just me or is it just me no it's not just you yeah well, that's good and these little rings are nice and dense so dense i can't undo them with my fingers so that's good okay so we'll do the same thing here we will add a ring so that we can put our clasp on And if I was making earrings, this is the first place I would also add a ring because I want to have that earring hang, my earring, ear wire hang correctly. So it has to have a hole from front to back. So I would do the same thing here. And again, if we add our clasp here in line, you see that you need another ring in between. So I'll do it with another color so it's easy to see. I'm so proud of myself for staying in camera so much today. I'm Yeah, it's looking good. It's not now, always my strong suit, but I'm uh, best a quick, pleased. A quick question, Emily, as you're sure. doing that. Do you ever hammer your coils for a hammered effect? You can. It will spread the coils out some. 
And then mm -hmm. you may have to go back in and do more manipulation to them. Um, it would be lovely on the earrings, I think, if mm -hmm. you were doing that. Uh, I think it would look great. So there's my other side of my clasp, right? And those rings, I mean, it looks like it's all one piece right here. This mm -hmm. looks like it's all one thing, okay? It does help that it gives you a little something to hang on to here as well while you're building this bracelet. And I just did the other side of my Anna's clasp, right? Normally these would be at opposite ends of our bracelet. And right. we'll have that, we would have that loop already built in to work with. So here's the double link one. And I want you to watch. I will go slowly because the other one was such a quickie. I will go slowly to show you how this is done. This is my first link. My second link is going to go right into it. And I'm not going to really bend these yet. They're just going to nestle in together. And I'm going to push them so that they're sort of side by side. Those links are kind of set, set together. So here's the two loops. Now my next link has to go through two. Okay. Mm -hmm. So now I have three links built and I probably will go one more link before I start to manipulate these links closed. So this is link number two, the copper one, right? Number mm -hmm. two and link number three, that silver one. So here comes link number four and it's going to squish in there and turn. Okay. So see how these guys are all kind of side by side and sticking up like fins. Now I'm going to start to push them down. And so link number four, Emily, it went through link two and three? Correct. Okay. And link number five is going to go through the link number three and number four. Gotcha. So it may get kind of tight in here, right? Hard to kind of get that loop in there. It will fit eventually. You just got to kind of wiggle it around. And if you really can't get it in, you can actually collapse that link just a bit, make it a little tighter. And then it should fit in really easily. Mm -hmm. But I might go five or six or seven links here before I begin to kind of close these links down. It's much easier to get into them when they're kind of open. Right? Right. I see that. Is that good with everybody? Mm-hmm. Cool. Get that last one in there. Oh, it's a tough one. All right. So instead of really killing this link, I'm going to close it down just a little bit. And get him in there. Okay. Now I can push these links down a bit on themselves. So the links are half hidden and I like to kind of compress them so that there's a center spine raised up in the middle. I just think it looks really cool. And again, this is a place where that evenness of what you've done will really start to be apparent and really visible. Okay. So the last couple, maybe the last two or three, you can leave them open. Don't flop them over because then it'll be easier to get the next one through. Mm -hmm. And even the backside's kind of fun looking. I think Claire did a nice <laughs> job photographing the backside too, mm -hmm. so as you could see them. Yeah, it's really super even. Right? Really fun. Okay. So easy, huh? So easy. simple. And yet so effective. Gosh. Just wire and some pliers and you're good super to go. Super classic. Right? So with the earring, to make the stepped sizes, we change the, the length of the wire and we change the length of the link that we were making, okay? So when we make this one to the inch and three eighths, that's our first one. And then the second one, we're gonna cut a four and a half inch piece and coil it down to an inch and a half. And then the last one, we're gonna cut a three inch piece and coil it down to one inch. So we're measuring both the length of the wire piece that we're cutting, and then this link, this coiled link formation to make the earring. And I love a briolette. I, I think they're gorgeous beads. I think we have some amazing colors. Yeah. I, the quality of our briolettes are incredible because they have a very even, tidy hole. And I, I checked this this morning, actually, while I was kind of getting ready. 
This is a hole in these um, turquoise ones that'll mm -hmm. fit 22 gauge wire. Yeah. That's kind of unheard of in yeah. a bracelet. I mean, I would expect 20, 24 kind of regularly, and I would be understanding when I had to go down to 26. But having a 22 gauge hole in a briolette is pretty spectacular. Yeah. Um, and it depends on the material too. Like those copper, um, bronze copper or the turquoise copper, yeah. the material is a lot tougher than let's say, um, uh, like even like the, the garnet or whatever, the material right. might be a little more brittle. So yeah, always check your briolette, um, the whole sizes, um, because sometimes you can get away with a heavier gauged wire. I, the quality, as you say, M is really good. It's really, really nice. And, and that's, you know, frankly, I don't say that lightly. Um, you know, over the years, Kate and I have conservatively taught thousands of people how to make beaded jewelry. <laughs> it's true. And we have handled, probably handled millions of beads ourselves. Um, so there, there's some hard one information there and there's some hard one experiences. Um, what I would always recommend to you when you're buying beads, especially in person and under pressure, like at a bead show or, you know, when you are happening across something and you didn't know you were going to run into them, really take a moment to look at the hole in the bead. Mm -hmm. It's going to do a lot. You know, if the hole is straight, if the hole is even, if, um, if it's smooth, generous, it's smooth, has nice hole going in and on the other end. So both sides of the holes look like they're pretty looking. Um, I mean, it tells you a lot about the bead. It tells you that somebody felt this was a good enough quality bead to spend some time with and to make it good so that the next person who has to handle it has a good quality result too. Um, you know, briolettes, it's very common that they would drill a hole in the in and have meat in the middle. And so you get all kinds of configurations of holes, you know, holes that look like this. And a lot of times if you buy beads on a strand, the string is sort of deceptive and doesn't really tell you a lot of information. So <clears throat> just take a moment to look at the hole in the bead. Yeah. It tells you a whole lot and it allows you to make a really informed um, decision about purchasing that item. So. And you're going to show Emily where you put the briolette on the bracelet as well. I right? am. I am. So um, here's a, another garnet briolette, um, similar to the ones, I think Kate has the earrings at her end. I do. Um, and so it's, it's, you know, it's a common kind of lovely color. I would use this kind of a briolette because um, I think it's, it's really a nice sparkle that you can add to your piece. Um, this is a very classic shape of briolette too. So it looks great as an earring or as a charm. Um, and I'm going to actually put this on the loop end of the clasp. So if my bracelet has a bar and a loop, I'm going to put it on the loop end um, down here. And, you know, I can use this uh, middle jump ring or I can use the ring of the clasp or I can use any of those, any of those rings. When I do the earring, I wire wrap it directly to that bottom loop because it's sort of a natural spot for it to be. Um, and, uh, it's on a closed loop. It can't come out. Mm -hmm. right? So basically I need a piece of wire. Um, I cut a very short piece just, uh, for demonstration purposes. And this is maybe seven inches long. Typically when I cut wire, I cut it as long as possible to start with, because I'm going to do some manipulating here, might do two or three. But if I have any leftover, then I have enough leftover to do something else with. Um, so I don't, I saw somebody on the internet the other day and she was making um, wire wrapped links, mm -hmm. like a rosary chain link. And she cut a bunch of pieces of wire. She had a whole stack of them, like 20 or 30 of them. Mm -hmm. And I thought, wow, that's a lot of wasted material. You know, um, silver can be recycled. Gold filled can be recycled. But it's, it's until you get it back in that wire form, it doesn't really do you any good. So to get the most bang for your buck, I think, if you start with a piece that's two or three feet long and work from one end towards the other, mm -hmm. you waste less rather than cutting a lot individually. Mm -hmm. Okay. So 
I put my wire through my briolette. One side's long, one side is short. It doesn't matter which side that happens to be. I don't really even pay any attention. I'm gonna bend my wires up and over the top of the briolette. And what I'm looking at here is that the intersection where the wires pass one another is right at the tip of the briolette. And this is a moment when you wanna be just a little bit gentle with your wire. Briolettes can, if they're especially thin, uh, brittle stones, you can actually break the hole out. So break this part of the material, it's quite small, and then you have a very pretty sparkly rock, no more hole, right? So I'm gonna take my chain nose pliers, I'm gonna reach in here, and I'm just gonna grab that little intersection just below it, so right below where the bead, right, right next to where the bead is, and I'm gonna wrap that short wire around the long, a little bit like making a wire wrap, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna do a wrap here without a um, accent bead, but I'll get to that point and show you where I might add an accent bead. And I'm just gonna do, uh, I guess I'm gonna fit in two wraps here, okay? I'm gonna cut off the extra. And again, with my chain nose pliers, I'm going to press down that little end so it's kind of tidy, everything is tidy. So now I have my stone centered on my wire and I could use an accent bead here. I could actually slide another bead on and create a wrapped loop above. But for this particular application, because it's gonna be on your wrist and I don't want it to be too dangly, right? A little bit of dangle, but not a lot. I'm gonna wire wrap, finish this briolette wrap without a um, accent bead. So I'm gonna grab a hold of that wrap I just made and bend the wire across the top of the plier. So that makes our 90 degree bend that we make for wire wrapping so often. And wrap right over the top. Now in this case, I'm going to attach to a jump ring. So I don't need to connect these two right this second. But typically, this is the point where I would connect to something fixed. So if I was doing the earring, I would actually connect it at this point. I would slide the wire into the loop and then have that connect loop to loop. But this time, since I'm going to connect it to a jump ring, I kind of got a freebie. I'm going to hold on to that loop, and I'm going to wrap the new wire, that longer wire, right over the shorter one and make kind of a little chunkier wrap here, which I think looks kind of nice. Um, you can do a little more texturing there if you want. You can add it to make it a little bit more messy. Um, I tend to sort of like that sort of tidy, clean kind of a look. And then I'm going to come in here and open up a jump ring to make that guy hang. And I think the jump ring I'm going to use is the one that is closer to the um, bracelet itself. So it's this one down here. So if I'd been a little ahead of the game here, I would have attach that loop before I closed up this ring while I was making those links. But here we are. Can't go back now. Right, Kate? Correct. And we also have our skill builder. Um, you can find the skill building um, on the Briolette wrap right under our skill builder section on beadshop.com. There's a lot of great skill builders, including that briolette. And maybe more. There might be a few ways to do that, right? Yeah. I mean, you could, um, you could also, instead of um, putting the wires, like doing two wires through, sometimes if I'm doing like, a bare wire like sterling or copper i'll make a ball on the end with my torch oh yeah and i'll put that through um like that's a head pin. Of, yeah like a head pin and then i'll bring it up and wrap it around um there's a lot of different ways that you could play around with it for sure mm -hmm. well <laughs> roscoe is keeping watch in the other room he is I that's can hear him it's not the lawn, guys. I don't know what's going on out there. But we'll find out. 
It's all right. It's the UPS guy or the Amazon guy. Somebody's coming to bring something. Somebody. Yeah. Somebody. So that was fun, you all. Did you enjoy it? I hope yeah, so. Yeah, it really looks great. Um, it. Um, I think that there's a lot of potential for both um, what you showed with the double um with the double wire wrap or the double link and the single link. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if I can turn um, just to, uh, let me see here, if I can get us all on. All right. Bear with me here just here. a second. There we go. Here we, I'm oh, here. whoops. But oh. I need to, um, let me get my camera. Hang on. Uh, let me move it here momentarily. Let me get my front camera going. There we go. And I am back on. There I am. There great. you are. Fun. Awesome. Yeah. Great, great job on that. I love the older one that you have that was made of sterling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And oxidized. So if you did do something in sterling or in that um, bare copper, you could use just liver of sulfur to mm -hmm. um, oxidize it and then use a pro polish pad after it's oxidized to. I use um, I love using a little steel wool on these two. Or, sure. Or a steel wool. Mm -hmm. um, I think it just gives the silver kind of a nice gleam. And yeah, then a little bit of sheen. It the uh pro polish pad too but um mm -hmm. yeah i i love those i think they're really pretty yeah they look great well awesome so M, I will uh we'll be seeing you again soon you've got yeah. a project coming up yeah a couple um, of weeks oh, yeah or maybe yeah soon yeah and then I have for tomorrow I'm gonna take this camera out here so it's just you and I there we go um <clears throat> pardon me tomorrow is uh we're coming up on our great beat extravaganza uh in a few weeks but tomorrow if you take a look at all of our social media um it's my takeover day for the great beat extravaganza social media day so there's going to be some fun things going on so you guys can jump over to um, the Great Beat Extravaganza group. Um, I'll be posting in there and stuff. Um, it's been going on um, uh, for these past couple of weeks, all the different companies. So it's been fun to take some deep dives into there. Janice also said, don't forget, you guys, we do have a handout um, on this that Emily did. Yep. So you can go right to the project page and grab that. And I also uh, wanted to mention, you guys, you can follow us on all of our social, um, our Instagram at beadshop.com. Join us over on Facebook at The Bead Table and like and subscribe to our YouTube channel right at beadshop.com. And of course, you guys, you can find all of the information on the project and the products from today's broadcast right on our website. And don't forget to sign up to for the newsletter so you're up to date on everything. Um, we're really grateful that you guys support us in our small business because without you guys out there supporting what we do here, we wouldn't be able to do what we love. So okay. thank you, thank you, thank you. I will see you guys on Friday for Free Tip Friday. And then, um, as you guys know, starting on the first, which I believe is actually Friday, Saturday, I think it is. Saturday, am I right? I yes. don't have my calendar in front of me. Calendar over there. Yeah. Yeah. Saturday. Saturday. So uh Saturday is our next monthly mix drop. So you guys aren't mm. gonna want to miss that um as well. So that's what I've got going on. Thanks, M. This was a great project. Good fun, huh? Really fun. Beautiful. Hey, take that copper one and Take that copper one and oxidize it for us. Yeah, I should I should oxidize it. I need to right. find my antiquing solution. It's around. That looks uh, so good. It's around somewhere. But it's really, it's so gorgeous. So yeah. whatever gauge wire you choose. Um, 28. Did this 20. 
Um, it really looks great. Yeah. So thanks so much, Emily and I. We'll see you guys soon. Mm -hmm. Thanks mm -hmm. all. And have a great week. I'll see you on Friday. Bye, guys. Thanks so much. Bye. Thanks so yeah. much.